A victorious leader plans for many eventualities before the battle. A defeated leader plans for only a few. Many options bring victory. Few options bring defeat. No options at all spell disaster. So said Sun Tzu in The Art of War. At ease, gentlemen. Perhaps you joined as an enlisted officer, or were thrust into a quick promotion. Regardless of how you've come here, this training will help keep you and your men the best of the best. First and foremost, every infantryman is responsible for their own lives, as well as the lives of their peers. This is best accomplished by each member playing their part and coordinating with one another. A medic, for instance, should not jump into the fray at the head of the section. No. He should follow behind where he can and use his skills to tend to the wounded. Additionally, roles like the marksman and the machine gunner are great as a base of fire. The MG can provide broad suppressive fire, and the marksman can take calculated strikes at key enemy targets. Even the man with the bazooka should stay close to the section in order to provide adequate support in case of enemy armor. Only together, as a coordinated section under the lead of a section leader, will victory be attained swiftly and friendly losses be minimized. No goal is unreachable by the section lead if he maintains a solid and thawed out section organization. Careful attention should be paid to ensure the section has a medic, a radio man, and at least one MG. The rest of the kits and how they are distributed depends on the section's goals and the circumstances of the objective. When possible, the section lead should plan out which infantryman will act as a base of fire element and which one will assault. From then on, this organization will allow the section lead to call out the element he needs to perform an action without having to list their names. In addition to section organization, the SL needs to be mindful of key terrain that he, friendly sections, or the enemy might use. He must always be observing his surroundings and take note of where he is and how to respond to taking contact at that precise location. All activities should be conducted within cover or concealment if no cover is available. If the SL keeps these in mind, he will be able to spot obstacles in his way in the avenues of approach the enemy will take. More importantly, an SL has the ability to place a regroup call. These regroup calls allow fresh troops to be deployed at that location. When near a radio man, he can place a regroup call by holding T and selecting it in the radio menu. Make sure not to place the regroup call where the enemy is expected to approach from or in circle as it will likely be spotted and destroyed. Lastly, he needs to keep a note of the timer. If it reaches zero, the regroup call will be disbanded and will need to be set again. Instead, he'll need to refresh the regroup call when near it or any radio man. In the heat of battle, there is a delay between when an order is given and when it can be followed through. Additionally, soldiers can often get pinned down or seek their own personal glory. Although success can be found in these circumstances, the smart bet is always on the well-informed and coordinated section. The risk of failure is too high. Therefore, keep the men together and make sure to keep orders brief, clear, in a reasonable amount within a small period of time. There is no sense in confusing or irritating the men. The best way to work as a section, be it giving out orders or coordinating with other section leads, is to use the map. Press enter to pull it up. From there, right click with the mouse at the precise grid location in order to mark it. Note that the grids are lettered at the top and numbered on the left-hand side. This allows for quick references. Furthermore, each grid is split again and numbered in accordance with a keypad. Lastly, they are broken down even further to many keypad coordinates. Pay attention. At times a soldier might simply say, Enemy tank on me! Or they might give out the exact location, Enemy tank at G478. If the latter is done, it's important that they relay it so the section lead can appropriately respond and mark it on the map. This is done by pressing enter and right clicking with the mouse. He has many markers at his disposal. Choosing the correct one will allow other sections to appropriately respond. As long as the section is together and is organized as a base of fire and assaulting element, it will be easier to maneuver and engage the enemy. Whether fire is being taken from the enemy or not, the section should always proceed with caution when crossing an open field or a street. Either of these are open ground that can easily be locked down by a single enemy machine gun to pin a section down at best, 
or slaughter them at worst. When assaulting an area, it is imperative that the section quickly establish a volume of fire through single and accurate shots, as well as suppressive fire. It is not necessary for every shot to land at an identified target. Rather, shooting where the enemy is expected to be will do a great service by forcing them to keep their heads down. Once this is achieved, fire superiority will be kept up by the base of fire element as the assaulting element moves in. Most importantly, this can be done out in the field as well as within a city. As long as the section is working together, anything can be achieved. Regardless if a section is moving or stationary, an SL should keep his men in cover and ensure 360 degrees of security and awareness are maintained. And in case manure strikes a proverbial fan, he must always have a backup plan. A commander isn't just somebody with a loud mouth and orders to give out. Any mean drunk after a few too many can do that. No, a commander must act as a guide and a conduit for the whole platoon. His demeanor, actions, and suggestions are a model for his section leaders to follow. But in the end, it is up to the section leaders to determine how best to handle their men. Thus, it is the commander's job to work together with the section leads rather than shoehorn the sections into the precise actions he desires. Additionally, he can coordinate with the SLs to mark the map, suggest sections to pull off, support, or deploy at a particular location. Typically, the best action is to get situation reports on what each section is doing and what intel they have about the enemy. Even without delivering orders, asking this will allow other section leaders to be more informed and make better decisions. The commander has the ability to rain hellfire from the sky. By pressing enter, he may pull up his map and zoom into the location he wishes to strike. Then, you can right-click and go to the Support tab. As long as a commander is by a radio, he will be able to call in support. The directional arrow determines where the strikes will land. After a call is made, within a minute the strike will occur. Use these carefully and intentionally. Both the artillery and the planes will take some time to reset, rearm, and refuel. For this reason, a single call will take time before it can be called again. It is the commander's job to coordinate with other sections to make sure at least two cardinal directions are being covered in a defense or attacked in an assault. Another section, perhaps an armored one, should be used to sweep around the perimeter to distract the enemy, take out the regroup calls, or destroy their fobs. Too many sections working together towards either task will result in the enemy's freedom of movement and their inevitable control over the objective. The best defense surely is the best offense. When possible, conduct a defense in depth. This layered approach to defending an objective allows sections to maneuver and fall back with ease. The genius of this defense is the ability to keep the enemy distracted and off the objective. A defense in depth, as well as an effective offense, can only be accomplished by utilizing multiple deployment locations. The commander must ensure that there is always more than one location for the platoon to deploy at or else the single location the platoon will be forced to deploy at can easily be found, surrounded, and destroyed. Last, and certainly not least, the commander should use all the tools at his disposal. Strafing runs are great against the enemy infantry when called on avenues of approach. In contrast, bombing runs and artillery strikes are great for fixed urban or fob locations. Although out shooting the enemy is useful, it alone will not vest a clever and well-organized opponent. Half the battle is gaining intel and communicating with the men below and above you. Once that is achieved, it will be a lot easier to catch the enemy with their pants down and bring us one step closer to victory.